Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are poised for an exciting evening as the National Youth Council of St. Lucia, the recognized voice, an umbrella organization for youth, prepares to select its leadership at its biannual General Assembly, where youth representatives from across the length and breadth of St. Lucia cast their ballots for the members of the new executive. I am your host, former NYC president, Jonathan Shalom. Stay tuned for an enthralling one-hour program with three outstanding young leaders who are vying to lead the St. Lucia National Youth Council. For those of you watching at home and on Facebook, keep the comments coming and you are free to post your questions to the candidates you wish to engage. This is a town hall style debate and you, the audience, you are invited to pose your questions to the assistant moderator at the back who will guide you accordingly. Each candidate shall have one minute and 30 seconds to respond to an initial question and 30 seconds for a follow-up contribution. When you are left with 20 seconds, our timer, the ravishing Ramel Polius, will indicate to you how much time is left and when your time has elapsed. Let us exercise discipline and adhere to our timeline as this is a live show and there are many topics we wish to explore. Gentlemen, I urge you to capitalize on this opportunity to reach out to young people and let's engage in positive dialogue and conversation as we edify the nation on youth issues and mobilize support for your respective campaigns. Our three contesting candidates vying for the position of president are, to my immediate right, Mr. Nias Alfred, Mr. Robert Rene, sandwiched in the middle, and Mr. Dwight George, to my far right. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, we'll open the batting with Mr. Alfred, who is the outgoing first vice president of the National Youth Council. Give us a sense of your track record, your involvement in youth, and why should youth invest confidence in you as the highest level as president? Thank you very much, Charlo, and thank you to everybody for being here. Um, like you mentioned, my name is Nias Alfred. I am from the community of Chuzel, very beautiful community of Chuzel, I might add. I began youth work at a very tender age, 12 years old. And the reason I got into youth work was to basically get away from a lot of the distractions that I had around me growing up. And that is something that I got to love. And it was through my love for, for youth and for youth development that I got started at the primary school level, the secondary school level growing up educational um, advocacy in education was extremely important to me. And that basically um, lent into my involvement on the community level, my involvement on the national level as well. And like you said, I was recently the um, first vice president of the Senusha National Youth Council. And even in my professional capacity, I've always found a way to include youth development because that is indeed my passion. As I serve as the co-founder of a, a social enterprise and as the executive director of a company that uses sports for social development of at-risk young people. So youth development is indeed what I have spent the last 15 years doing. And I have decided to take on the, the, the step of um, going up to, for the presidency of the National Youth Council because I believe that I, it is the right moment that you know, I engage the young persons around me in order to ensure meaningful change um, for the young people in St. Lucia. Mr. Rene, what is your track record in youth development and why should you be voted in as president? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to, of course, um, commend the uh, National Youth Council and the Electoral Committee for putting together this wonderful debate. I think we should also replicate that on the, uh, when I say the national level, I mean with regards to our political candidates as well. I think it's important for uh, individuals to, to get a chance to, to hear what um, the candidates have to see. Um, having said that, um, in 2005, I received the Youth of the Year for the South Castries Youth and Sports Council for outstanding contribution to youth work. And of course, that is uh, approximately 14 years ago. So that should give you an idea of how long I have been involved in youth work. Uh, I was a member of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. I was a member of the St. Lucia National Youth Choir. Um, I was also uh, national cricketer. So of course I have been a part and parcel of both sports uh, and youth development. And um, I am presently the president of the South Cassius Youth and Sports Council of which um, we have been making considerable strides in our community with regards to youth development. And so I believe that the time is very fitting for, um, for myself to 
to, to be at the helm of the National Youth Council because I realized that over the past few years, the National Youth Council has not um, met the needs of those young people who actually need the intervention. And so we need somebody at the helm to ensure that there is no young person left behind when it comes to national youth policy. Um, thank you, Renee. Um, Mr. George, you are the first fresh face in the youth movement. Um, tell us what you bring to the table and why should you feel at you as president? Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, my initial phase began in, in youth development began in church as I was the president of the Christians in Action Youth Group, which is a Catholic-based youth group. And also from there, I went into the acting youth coordinator, which is I am now present, and the vice president of the Artistic and Cultural Youth Development Canvas. I am also sitting on the chair of the YEAC, which is a youth group also stemming from the Catholic Church. I will not say that I am the best candidate for, I will not start off by saying that I am the best candidate because we are all, we would not be sitting here if the committee did not think that we were best for this. But my solutions and my five ambitions prove that I am ready and I am the best for this. Thank you. All right. Um, let's look at NYC structures. Um, what do you think are the most important government issues for an incoming NYC executive? Um, would it, if you want to look at membership, unattached youth, constitution reform, advocacy, what do you guys think would be priority number one? Um, let's start with um, Ricky, um, Mr. George. Can you repeat that, please? Um, in terms of governance issues, what do you think um, would be the most important and most pressing issue that the NYC should tackle? I believe the most pressing issue that governance should tackle it is unemployment. It is affecting many youths on the island, and I think that is where we need to focus our energies and time. Rene? With regard to the NYC structure, um, the fact is, I believe uh, that the, the National Youth Council uh, can do more to ensure that our District Youth and Sports Council are, Councils are functioning properly. The District Youth and Sports Council would be the vehicle, it's the catalyst f by which we are going to implement all our programs. If they are not functioning properly, then it is going to be extremely difficult to implement the changes that we want it to change. And at present, we have quite a number of district youth and sports councils extremely deficient. And I hate to, to say it, but it is a fact. The Shwazel Youth and Sports Council, they have not been functioning at optimum capacity. And, and, and I was happy that he mentioned Shwazel in his, in his preamble that he's from this community because uh, for, for, for you as a vice president to be from Shwazel and for Shwazel uh, to not be functioning as a youth and sports council, I think that is uh, very indicative of the fact that um, that the National Youth Council, or even Mr. Nias Alfred, who was responsible for Shwazel, failed to ensure that our district youth and sports councils um, got the help and the resources that they need. So I would believe the first order of business would be to ensure that all our district youth and sports councils will be functioning at optimum capacity because I know, I believe that we have the young people in St. Lucia to, to full and complete our executives. Mr. Alfred? Okay, first of all, I would like to take a few seconds just to respond to Mr. Rene and that would definitely, the meaning of functional, what do we really determine or define as functional? Because an executive like the South Cash Youth and Sports Council that has had several resignations over the past year, is that what we call functional? All right? And the question was, how do we basically ensure that, you know, what, in terms of the structure of the NYC, what we should mm -hmm. focus on? And I do believe that it has to be a marriage between advocacy and action. Too much in the past, we've just, we've just, just basically been spitting in the sky. And you know, when you spit in the sky, the spit only comes back down. So we need to ensure that we marry advocacy with key action policies. And I believe that my team has put together a manifesto. We don't want to call it, a, we're call it an action plan that speaks to engaging young people at all levels. Young people at the grassroots level, young people at every single level that have otherwise not been engaged in the youth development agenda in St. Lucia. And I think it is imperative that we have a, a leadership that is visionary and one that can actually um, relate to the young people in St. Lucia. So I definitely think responding to your question, moderator, that it has to be a marriage between advocacy and action. Um, 
just to just to speak the 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 the, the fact is with regards to our resignations as you rightly mentioned we have had some of our executive members resign one resigned because they had to leave the state for personal issues that's a resignation the other resigned because they they were going moving on to higher education that's two resignations so for you to come and try to insinuate that it is because we are not functional that we have had these resignations is uh, misleading um and i'm 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 very happy that um that you know you, you you brought that up and gave me an opportunity to clear that up i just want to dwell on this a little um our unattached youth how do we get them involved the youth on the block the young professional who's come back from studies how do you guys propose that the nyc engage these talents that we have out there um well the nyc that i will be elected to um Chalon has definitely made Key, str key strides in trying to figure out a way to engage these very same young people. And with an NYC, a seven-member executive can never do it all. You have young persons from all breadths and lengths of the country who have key skills and expertise to contribute. And I think that as an NYC, we need to commission the NYC committees as they're supposed to. The Education Committee, Public Relations, and all these committees to bring in young people who have the expertise. And even young people in the diaspora, through the Youth Ambassadors Network International that we're proposing to launch, is a key opportunity to tap into the expertise of the young person to ask solution, but they, they don't get the opportunity here, so they see no option but to go overseas and contribute. So we definitely want to engage all young persons, whether or not they are in St. Lucia or out of St. Lucia, but definitely the plans and proposals that we have outlined in here will speak directly to engaging, like we said, every single young person, not just those on the block, but also those young professionals who otherwise um, are not engaged. Because I used to work at the bank. And it's very, very difficult for young um, professionals to get engaged. So definitely um, that is something that we, we are keen to accomplish. Mr. George, you want to weigh in on, on yes, the tattoo? Um, I believe that not all youth respond to the same dialect. Um, we need some different tactic to pull in those in the rural areas as well as those on the blocks. It is not only through the books and through the ropes that you pull them in. You use their strengths and their weaknesses as well to pull them in uh, competitions, football competitions, um, music competitions, and so forth, I believe. Those are the things that will bring in the rural and the youth on the block. Rene? Um, again, it is extremely important to, to work on the ground level. It is extremely important to literally walk through the communities if necessary. A lot of young people that I've spoken to say to me, they don't know about the NYC. A lot of them say that they don't feel like they can connect to the NYC because the NYC over the years have catered to a particular strata of young people and they have not catered to the young people on the ground. The truth of the matter is if it means that you need to, and I like that you mentioned the committees because you were there for two years. There was an education committee. The education committee that, that you guys set up, how much advocacy work did you do on behalf of the schools? Um, and I honestly believe that we have, come, we, have, we have arrived at the point where we can no longer trust individuals who just come and say, let's, let's do this as they have, as they have, rightly, um, as they have done uh, in the last election. All these promises were made. Two years was spent in office and nothing was done. So we must get to a point now where you, you need people who are willing to go into the communities, speak to the young people on the ground, and as we have done, and, and again, I like to lead by example, the South Cassius Youth and Sports Council literally walked through the community of Goodlands when we were looking to reestablish our Youth and Sports Council and talk to the young people. I believe that's the sort of, that's the sort of ambition that we need in the National Youth Council. Thank you. I'd like to respond to that. First of all, the Education Committee was set up, yes, but the job of the Education Committee was basically to empower the Students' Council, the National Students' Council, which is um, under the purview of the NYC. And I like the fact that Mr. Rennie mentioned walking through the communities, because fun fact, I live in Cicero, and I have lived in Cicero for the past six months, and the young people in Cicero do not know about the South Castro Youth and Sports Council. Some Members people. of my team are from communities in, Cic um, in South Castro, from Bexon. They have not heard of the South Castro Youth and Sports Council. So to insinuate that, you know, because you, um, you're going up for the NYC elections, that basically there was nothing done. 
Mr. Rene, you were at most of the activities of the NYSU over the past year. You were there, but to, to, to insinuate that nothing was done, I mean, that's just preposterous. All right, guys, I think it, we have to move on. We have, we have a tight schedule. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think is the most fundamental issue facing young people? And how does an NYC champion such an issue? Um, Dwight spoke about unemployment. You have tokenism, poor youth programming. Um, you alluded to the disconnect that young people feel towards um, institutions, for instance, the, the NYC. What do you think is the biggest issue, and how does NYC address that issue? Any one of you? OK. Um, one of the issues I think that we can all agree on is that young persons are not being engaged enough. And one of the key, our flagship program for the team that I'm running on, YTH, is a program called the Opening Doors for Opportunities program that would basically target young persons, at-risk young persons, from vulnerable communities. And what we would do is that we would use sports that bring the, the most unifying thing to bring them together. And when we have them there, we will mandate that they participate in um, capacity building workshops, job readiness symposiums, life skill training sessions, and everything that would help build them into holistic individuals that would contribute to society, both on a professional and a personal level. Too often have we seen young persons in the community saying that they don't have much to do. And every single organization or stakeholder has failed in that regard. And the job of the NYC in that regard as well would be to empower the Youth and Sports Councils to run with that program. The NYC is supposed to be the coordinator of programming, not the central organization that runs all the programming. So we bring together all the technical expertise, we bring together the resources with which we've worked very hard over the past couple of years to bring into the organization and we empower the youth and sports councils to run with these programs and to implement them so for sure that is one of our flagship programs and everything that we do will revolve around um, this flagship program thank you um first of all the south Cassius youth and sports council engaged the cicero seagulls uh sports group in Cicero. We provide a calendar of activities and one of the things that was on the calendar of activities was community walkthroughs. Cicero was a community or is a community that is on schedule for us to walk through, which, which means it will be done. We are on the ground. Um, I believe we, this, this um, gentleman here, um, Mr. Alfred, is indicating again that we are leaning towards sports. Everything cannot be sports. Yo not every young person is interested in sports. We need to start creating other opportunities in youth development. We are not just a sports council. We are a sport youth and sports council. And youth development oftentimes have been neglected. There are um, the creative arts, the drama, the music, Denry Segment. Look at what Denry Segment is doing for our country. Let us start using these facilities, these, these avenues to bring our young people together, to get them out of poverty, to create opportunity for them to develop their skills in the arts as well as the sports. I agree. Yes, we can use the sports, but we must focus. And again, again, we must cater to all young people. And, and I believe if we only focus on sports, we will be missing a large portion of our young people. So we must cater um, to youth development areas as well. Mr. George? I still stand by unemployment being the most, the biggest problem youth are facing. Um, whilst I say that, I read recently that um, youth cannot even afford to go to a job interview because they require the clothing, transportation, probably some snack or something. And those are the breach in causing them to I say not apply for the jobs. I think that the NYC should focus on youth training workshops as well as getting the funding which enable youth to in application processes and so forth. I guess I think. Yeah, I'd like to respond to that. Go ahead. Um, I think that we have quite clearly seen how this debate is going to pan out over the past over the next hour, where Mr. Rene will try his best to outline all the issues that affect young people that we already know. And Nias Alfred, and like Dwight has been doing, will propose solutions. The debate is two questions in. I mentioned sports. We have a, an action plan that speaks to every single thing that Mr. Rennie spoke about, engaging young people at all levels. And over the past the next few days, every single young person 
is going to be um, having access to this action plan um, that caters to young people from across all stratas. All right. Um, I want to share with you a quote from our founding president, Mario Michel, and I quote, when the government and the youth are in total accord, then there is something wrong with the youth. When the government and the youth is in total discord, there is something wrong with the government. Considering today's context, how relevant do you think this statement is? You only need some time to digest that. You want me to re <laughs> repeat, the, repeat the quote? Oh I'll come again. When the government and the youth are in total accord, then there is something wrong with the youth. When the government and the youth is in total discord, then there is something wrong with the government. This really touches on advocacy and uh, how NYC will position itself in dealing with issues of advocacy. How do you engage the government? Um, when the time comes for mil militancy, when it calls for diplomacy, how does an NYC um, approach I advocacy under your leadership? Um, unlike certain candidates on this platform, I believe that the uh, individuals running for the post for, for, for the post of the um, president should not align themselves with any political party. I believe doing that uh, diminishes your voice. You start to de you, you, you are placing yourself in a conundrum. And, and, and asking yourself, having to, to ask yourself, uh, you know, do, do, I, do, I, do I speak for the youth or, or should I speak against my... We should not hold the young people ransom when the government is not behaving themselves. When the government is not creating policies that, that cater to our young people. You need a leader that has no problem speaking against the government. And if I might add... I think a lot of young people here know that Robert Rennie has always been one to advocate on behalf of young people, even when it means criticizing the government. Because last year, I, when the government, when, when, when the parliamentarians were not behaving themselves in parliament, Robert Rennie was the first person to stand up and say that we, you, the young people uh, deserve better than that. And I, was, and I criticized the, both parties. We must not be an NYC that is going to be in bed with government officials. However, we do understand the role that they will play in youth development, and we would let them know we would like to work with you. Thank but you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. George? Uh, like Robert said, I, don't, I also disagree with any president being in any political party. Um, this affects the, the vision of the NYC, which is to hold our policy makers accountable. Um, I believe that to advocate on youth, what we need is more of the chill chats that happened at the past CYC Caribbean Youth Conference. This addresses a lot of the issues that affect the youth and it brings the policy makers to understand what the NYC is truly about. So I think this discussion needs to happen and needs to continue. Alfred? Uh, Dwight, are you a member of the LPM? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, definitely, um, I do think that there is a room, as you mentioned, um, Jonathan, for times for the NYC to be outspoken and times for the NYC to display a certain level of decorum and a certain level of diplomacy. And I do think, and I've said it in the past, and I've been quite vocal about it, that the NYC is supposed to speak on every issue that affects young people. But the question asks about advocacy the role of the NYC in advocating for young people to ensure that their voices are heard. And in our action plan, we have the concept of the NYC TV. And we've already had an agreement with Choice TV to start, as soon as Tim White is elected, to start of NYC TV on September 7, 2019. And uh, the, the program is basically going to target young people at all levels. There will be an underblock program where we go directly into the communities to hear from the young people we don't actually hear from on a normal, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that that will do wonders in terms of empowering young people to advocate. Because as much as seven members of the executive are supposed to do it, empowering them is much more powerful. And the NYCTV will seek to speak to that and will seek to give every single young person in this room 
an opportunity to air their views and the views of the persons um, within their circles. Uh, last year, um, Mr. Nias Alfred and his and the the then the, the then second vice president, Mr. Jani Lebon, attended a workshop in Trinidad and Tobago. The workshop was particularly for advocacy. Do you remember that? I remember it very Okay, clearly. you remember that. So Mr. Nias Alfred attended a workshop on behalf of us young people. And yet still, Mr. Nias Alfred failed to advocate on behalf of young people. So you're, you're, you're receiving the training. You're going. And, and, and this is a problem that we have had in the National Youth Council. People go overseas. They take bright, nice pictures. And then whatever information or whatever skill that they receive does not filter down to our communities. We cannot have another two years of that. We must end this right now. I guess you'd want to. I, of course. Um, <laughs> yes, if Mr. <laughs> if Mr. Rene is comparing our records on advocacy, I think that it would be very unfair to him. Because when we attended the, the advocacy workshop in Trinidad last year, the very first thing that we did was to put together a workshop for the youth ambassadors of the NYC. And their job was to go back into the communities and advocate for these things. And Mr. Rene has been going around saying about, you know, NYC takes fancy trips. Key fact, as first vice president, Nias Alfred only attended two events on behalf of the NYC. All the other, um, the other opportunities for young people were filtered down through the Youth Ambassadors Network. So the opportunities were created and they were taken advantage of. Um, What's been going on with your Youth Ambassadors Network? Ask your young people. The Youth Ambassadors Network has not been functioning at optimum number. It's, it's again, so just like the Shozel Youth and Sports Council, you, 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 you put the Youth Ambassadors Network, yes, but over the, uh, the few years, the Youth Ambassadors Network has not been um, properly uh, manned. It has, it has not had proper activities. The Youth Amb Ambassadors Network is almost non-existent. I have to respond to that because it seems like Mr. Rene is a Youth Ambassador himself. <laughs> I am a Youth Ambassador. Because the Youth Ambassadors Network received funding from the lotteries where we've had training programs. Two members of my current YTH team come from the Youth Ambassadors Network, which speaks to the development through that network. And several opportunities have been created for these ambassadors to serve as representatives both locally, regionally, and internationally. To, see, to insinuate that the Youth Ambassadors Program, while there are challenges, mm -hmm. while there are cha and I will admit that there are challenges, okay. the Youth Ambassadors Network and a lot of ambassadors can tell you it has done the job that it was supposed to. It's not perfect, but it's a work in progress. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> we, we need to as move on. Everything. I was... I had planned a nice hot button issue, but it's very hot in here right now. <laughs> there are many youth today who identify with the LGBTQ community and believe in issues such as legal abortion, comprehensive sexuality education, and LGBT rights. There are many, especially in our faith-based faith -based community, who are in opposition to the advancement of such agendas. What is your take on the issue? And how would you handle controversial issues such as these as NYC president? Uh, if I may, if I may, um, about a, I believe it was last week, um, I did an interview with um, Hot 7 News. I also did an interview with Choice TV. Um, in response to what some had dubbed to be the Gay Pride Parade, which was supposed to have been taking place here in St. Lucia. All those who know me know that my foundation is in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But I say to people, quite frankly, that even as a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm not going to impose on anybody's rights to choose. I believe it is important that we be an NYC for all young people, including the LGB, um, LGBTQI community. And the, I would not allow my Christian beliefs to impede people's right to choose. And for me, that's where it stopped. Just because Robert Rennie may not ascribe to another denomination or another, another uh, sect, um, belief, sector's belief, whether it be the Rastafarians, all of us have the right to choose. And that, for me, is what's important. That's, what, that's the beauty of democracy. We must protect that right to choose. Unlike Mr. Rennie's recent um, advocacy of the LGBTQ community and the issues, the issues that face young people in St. Lucia, in the LGBT community, they are not new. 
these issues have been issues that have been perpetuated over the past um, decades. And one of the things that we keep doing when it as it relates to these issues is we keep spitting in the sky. We keep saying that there is an issue. Yes, we know that there is an issue. But then NYC, under the leadership of YTH, will ensure that we give young persons in that community a seat at the table. We stop speaking about the, the, the issues. Yes, the issues will always be there. But we need to bring them to the table and ensure that we discuss pragmatic and sustainable solutions to engage them in the community, to engage them in youth development work, and all, all aspects as well. And I do agree that um, every single young person in St. Lucia has the right to choose, no matter where exactly, um, um, what exactly you do. All right? So, so that is something that we, we agree on. Mr. George? Yep. Thank you, Nias, for saying that they need to be included at the seat. Mm -hmm. um, one of my ambitions in my manifesto, it is gender and gender equality, which is inclusiveness for everybody including the, that of the LGBTQI plus community. Yes, there are issues that they face, and the pride, it is not a parade. It is a fashion show and a boat ride, correcting you on yes. that. No, I, I, I already established that it was, it was <laughs> not, it was, there was no gay pride parade. I found that out, yes. Um, while we know of the issues, one of my manifesto seek to address them, highlight them, and to put an end to them. Thank you. Um, if, I, if I may interject, uh, Mr. Mr. Alfred had two years to bring them to the table. You had two years to bring them to the table. You, you, you are a typical politician, Mr. Alfred. You cannot keep at, the, at every time you want votes, every time we want votes, we coming. Yes, let us promise. You, you were there for two years. And you did nothing. You did not bring them to the table. So why should we trust you now to bring them to the table now? Why should we do that? Give you another two years. And, and, and in fact, you know, somebody told me that, and, and I, stand, I could stand corrected, that you were one of those advocating that you should not um, run for a second term in election. And here you are again. So you are a typical politician. You're lying to the bedroom. Let's, guys. You're lying to the bedroom. Let's, 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 avoid, let's avoid the one-on-one the -on -one attacks and let's, let's stick to the issues. I, I believe you'd want to respond. Of course. And um, like I always say, I, I did initially state that I would not recontest the elections of the NYC. But at one point, I felt that I have built a foundation to keep going. Because one of the problems NYC has had is that we have a lot of one-term NYCs. And when we come to um, basically going to the NYC for another term, it's just a restart. And I agree, and I do want to stray from the point. I agree with everything you said, Mr. Mr. George. And whichever one of us comes to be elected as president of the NYC, I will work with you to ensure that the issues in your manifesto are, are addressed. All right, so I believe it's time for a break. We'll get some water, we'll cool off. I think we need to turn in the AC. It's been a wonderful show just far. I'm sure those of you at home are enjoying. So we'll take a break. Thank you. Human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs, see it, report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIP hotline at 847. Social media is the prevailing mode of communication for today's youth. What role do you think social media can play in advancing the youth agenda? And in what ways do you see social media as a threat to youth? You want me to give it a go again? Mm -hmm. Social media is a prevailing mode of communication for today's youth. What role do you think social media can play in advancing the youth agenda? And in what ways do you see social media as a threat to youth? Um, I think I'll, I'll begin that. And 
Yes, social media definitely can play a key part, but I want to just broaden it a bit shallow to technology on the whole. And I think that has a critical part to play um, in terms of engaging young people because as much as we want to visit the communities, how many of us can attest to the fact that we've planned meetings in the communities and young people actually show up? So we need to find creative ways of bringing young people into that space through what they already know. That's technology and social media is a part of it. So that is why a, a team with the YTH has proposed the, an NYC website and an app which will engage every single young person to engage them of the, the activities that the NYC are doing, to give them a platform as well that they can showcase the, the, the things that they're doing within their communities and to create that virtual space where they can interact and they can learn about the other aspects of, of youth development in St. Lucia um, with like-minded individuals. So I definitely think that that is a part to play. And for our team, that is definitely a focus. And we intend to, to launch that um, app and website within the first four months um, of being elected? Um, I, for the first time, I think me and Mr. Alfred, we agree on one thing. Um, our team, in our last preliminary discussions, uh, we decided that the National Youth Council must have a website. How doesn't the, why doesn't the National Youth Council have a website? Right? We are talking about living in an age of technology and the parent body for all youth organizations on the island does not have the website, does not have a website. And again, these very individuals who NYC did not have a website under is now promising a website. I don't believe that they have the, the ambition to deliver it. Um, second thing, the, I rem as the president of the, the South Castle Youth and Sports Council, I, I understood the importance of social media. When one of our parliament, youth parliamentarians uh, found herself being bullied after youth parliament this year, the, the South Castle Youth and Sports Council decided to, 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 to begin an anti-bullying campaign of which we targeted uh, young people on social media. We created a Vine, or what we call a PSA, a short one-minute video, um, and promulgated it on Facebook and, and Instagram and all the social media platforms I believe it's time for us again. We're marrying the arts with social media to reach the young people, and I believe that is the the um, the method by which we should we should go. While we agree that our young people are very tech savvy and glued to our phones, um, a website is long overdue for the NYC, as well as a youth directory. The directory which leads to all youth councils, district councils, student bodies, NSCs, those need to be brought forward and placed on that website. Let me just respond quickly. Okay. Um, I think that that is one thing that we agree on definitely, but in Mr. Reddy's quest of trying to prove, and like I said, is going to highlight all the issues and I'm going to give the solutions, but in this one case, I find that I, I need to respond. That is definitely something that I take full responsibility for the NYC not having a website. But it doesn't seem like Mr. Rene did much research about the team that he's going up with. Because one of his candidates was previously the PRO of the NYC St. Lucia National Youth Council with direct responsibility for overseeing something like a website. So where is a website? Why didn't we inherit it? Um, if I may speak to that, the, the individual was, was on the NYC for a brief time in interim. Two years. Okay. <laughs> brief time. And so... And so, um, nonetheless, for, and, and, and I find it somewhat hypocritical of you to, to criticize somebody that you see was on the executive for two years. They did not accomplish the website, but you were also there for two years and you didn't do it. And now you want another two years to get it done. So, so, so you know, I, I, I do not buy into it. The fact is, uh, as a president of a youth and sports council, I have... I have a track record of getting things done in my constituency, and that is what I'm bringing to the table with the National Youth Council. All right, so we, we have a question from Facebook, from SB Francis. Should NYC seek to have a position with government to review policies that affect youth? Do you think it is important for a youth review to be done over certain policies before they are passed to ensure a youth voice is added? I'll go for that again. Should NYC seek to have a position with government to review policies that affect youth? Do you think it is important for a youth review to be done over certain policies before they are passed through to ensure a youth voice is added? Yes, if I may. I believe um, 
that should have been the purpose of youth parliament, for one. Uh, the youth parliament should have been uh, uh, an exercise where young people on the, on the island um, speak to issues that affect young people, um, speak to policies that affect young people. I also believe that it's, why, why, why don't we have an independent senator from the National Youth Council, right, in the Senate? Why? We, we, it's, it, it, you know, we should, we should be able to, st we, we, need, we need to start, start thinking on that level because um, it is important, again, for the NYC, for the voice of the young people to be heard. And I believe, yes, we should, um, we should take a look at all policies before it is passed, definitely. Right? Yes, I definitely agree with our commenter. Um, uh, the policies that our policy makers affect our youth directly and indirectly and it is important highly important that we have a place at the table to discuss those policies and see them before they are put to pass okay i will not spend time on the issue because they've highlighted it pretty well because um, we know the issue and we know the issue of youth parliament that is why the yth team has proposed a restructuring of youth parliament which will ensure that youth parliament is a place where you can actually go and pass not pass, but discuss actual bills that then go into the, the upper and the low house to be discussed and you know, with the possibility of actually passing them through parliament. Too long have we sit around and said that you know, youth parliament is something which should be improved and we have no solutions to the issues. So what we've proposed is um, the fact that young persons to youth parliament are elected within their various communities through the district youth and sports councils and they serve a period of two years where they work closely with the permanent secretaries of the various ministries to ensure that they build or develop programming and um, they, they, they review policies to bring it to the young people of St. Lucia and to ensure that youth parliament is actually something that we can see that we're proud of, that can level the, um, rival the, the, the likes of Suriname, for example, that has a great youth parliament structure. All right, we have another question from Anthony Duncan Glasgow. Uh, what is your take on legal abortion? What is your take on legal abortion? Um, so I guess um, this commenter is asking, you know, do you think that St. Lucia should engage in legal abortion laws? Um, do you think it's something that uh, NYC should probably push? What is your take? Again, again, I advocate for a woman's right to choose. I advocate for a woman's right to choose. I am not going to tell any woman who has been molested, who was raped, that she has to keep a child that may very well be the reminder of that particular difficult experience for her rest of her life. If we decide to legislate and say that it's mandatory for, for women to, 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 um, to go for a full term of pregnancy, I think we are opening a can of worms. Uh, we are denying women the right to choose. And I don't believe, again, in, the, in, in infringing on anybody's rights to choose. Dwight? Um, Robert said exactly what I was going to say. But um, <laughs> yes, I agree with everything that he's saying. Um, we should give the women the right to choose in an instance of rape and molestation. So yes. Um, definitely, I agree with the other two um, candidates at the table that Definitely we have to, especially as youth leaders, respect the rights of women to choose. And I think that there also has to be something else done, apart from respecting. We need to educate young women about the, the, the dangers of um, um, something like legal abortion. Because as we know, if it's something that is not morally accepted in our society, some of them will find alternative means to do it, which might ha harm them and harm the, 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 the child if the child is not um, aborted properly. So I think that we definitely need to engage in proper education um, as it relates to abortion in St. Lucia. And the conversation really has to begin as to um, whether or not we, we go that or our policy makers rather go that right. But definitely, Team YTH is in, um, in support of women's right to choose. All right, awesome. Um, we're going to take another break at, at this moment. Um, you guys have been an awesome audience. Um, I urge you to um, keep it quiet. Um, you are, will have an opportunity to ask some questions later, so take a note of the questions that you wish to ask. So we move for a break at this point. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. 
All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We now move on to the floor. We are going to entertain questions from the floor. I want to urge you guys, this is a live show. Choose your words wisely. <laughs> Let us do this with a sense of decorum. Let us avoid personal attacks and long commentaries before we pose our questions. So you'll indicate by a show of hands. Um, so the floor is open. Yes, go ahead. Okay, question. Over the past few years, there's been a silence when it comes to youth and cannabis related issues. My question is why do you believe that there's been this silence from the NYC and what are your plans to break this silence? Thank you. Um, again, the reason why we've had this silence is because we've not had an NYC that believes in ensuring that we cater to the needs of all our young people. Um, we have a case where, we have a case where um, a particular member of this panel indicated to a young woman that because of her religion, he's not going to consider her for his team. Now, now, that already is discrimination. That already is marginalizing young people. We must not leave the Rastafarian community out of the discussions. The Rastafarian community has, has of course, um, been marginalized. Um, the issues that affect them, we have remained silent on it. Um, with regards to the legalization of cannabis, I believe that the young people must, we must come together at the table and assess this matter properly. Because the truth of the matter is, there are both pros and cons to the discussion. And it's not something that we are just going to jump into and see, because at the end of the day, it may very well have a, a, a greater effect uh, on our healthcare system if it is a f if if we increase if young people rather um, more young people are using and it you know it, it's affecting their mental health that may play place some issues on our healthcare so it's it we have to make sure that when we do get into the discussion it is an informed discussion um, so that we can make a decision on it but I definitely believe that the time has come for us to not remain silent on this particular issue first of all. Um Mr. Rene spoke about um, persons being victimized and, and whatnot. I don't remember his exact words. But that exactly is defamation of character. Because Nias Alfred never mentioned these words. He never mentioned these words, and we can take it up later. But as it relates to cannabis um, and advocacy for cannabis, the absence of somebody going out doesn't mean that you're not advocating. Because this NYC, I'm not going to say this NYC, but Nias Alfred has engaged young enthusiasts who have an interest in cannabis and a cannabis advocacy, but the problem remains that it is still illegal. We are looking for, we are trying to put together steps in order to ensure that we legalize cannabis in St. Lucia, or we decriminalize it rather. But at, this, at the end of the day, it is still illegal, and persons may not necessarily feel comfortable in going out there and expressing themselves as um, cannabis users or, or um, advocates of cannabis. But we have started key conversations with persons in that movement, key, is one a young man who was, um, Mr. Rennie was at the Bukha in Chuzel, was on the panel. He can attest to the fact that these conversations have started. And as soon as government puts the legislation in place to ensure that they're empowered to speak to these issues without fear of victimization and, and, and arrest by police, then we go, uh, we go ahead and then start the, I, the conversations. No, Mr. George, you, your opportunity to weigh. Thank you. 
I believe um, we need to start this with a conversation between our policymakers and our young leaders. Um, first, before anything, we realize that it is illegal, of course. So the conversation between policymakers and the youth leaders needs to happen before anything, which is our first step. Thank you. We have another question from the floor. Thank you very much. I really love the fact that Junior is able to ask this question, but I think Nias, both Nias and uh, Mr. Rennie opened up for this. NYC's policies are dictated by the Youth and Sports Councils. Yes. So sometimes if an issue is not on the radar of the Youth and Sports Councils, at General Assembly, these are the issues that come up. If it does not come up, honestly speaking, it's very difficult sometimes to convince Youth and Sports Councils about the importance of the issues. My question is how do we now as a new executive, potential new executive, ensure that the critical issues that are affecting the nation end up on the agendas of the various youth and sports councils because most of our youth and sports councils are sports oriented and that's one of the biggest issues let's be realistic your membership is not the unattached young people in Lucia. sadly they don't vote for you although you have to serve them but your votes come out of the youth and sports councils so you must be able to ensure that the youth and sports councils are operating what are the plans for this and how do you ensure that the national issues end up on the agendas of those youth and sports councils uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you asked that question because earlier I remember mentioning the fact that um, unlike Team YTH, we are not going to focus solely on, on, on sports. We will be focusing as well on youth development. Um, and I also mentioned the fact that uh, a little earlier that our first order of business when, when we are elected into the NYC is to ensure that the District Youth and Sports Councils are, work, are, are working because they are the catalysts for the change. They are the, 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 the vehicles by which we would drive all these, um, all these plans that we have. And if they are not working, then the plans will not get done. And so um, I believe we must set oversight committees. We must um, ensure that the oversight committees monitor the youth and sports councils and their activities. Um, because too often, the the, the, the District Youth and Sports Councils will tell you during election they see the NYC. After election they don't see the NYC. And as, as uh, Mr. Alfred rightly said, seven people cannot do it. You must set committees in place to ensure that somebody is looking after these councils all throughout the year and engage them. Um, I, I noticed that you had an activity planned for this particular date. Why isn't that activity? What is going on? We must continually engage these Youth and Sports Councils. And I also said that our first order of business uh, would be to go into the communities and meet with the young people. That is the first step. We have to go and meet the young people that we are catering to. Too often they have been left behind. Dwight? Again, this all st um, starts with conversation, open conversation with the youth and sports councils, district councils, um, separating the sports from the youth issues. We, we tend to be focused more on sports, as Rene said, and ignore a lot of the issues. So at the General Assembly, those issues need to be brought forth. And even before that, a conversation needs to happen. Yes. Again, I have indicated that our policy is not driven by sports. And Mr. Rene keeps speaking about plans, but we're hearing very few of them, I must admit. Um, but we are in, um, in agreement that the District Youth and Sports Councils, they, they, they need to have special attention. And our job is not to monitor the district and sports councils. Yes, they're within our purview, but our role as a national youth council is to engage, is to engage the youth and sports council. Yes, we need to know what's going on with them, but through engaging them and ensuring that when they have their activities, that the NYC is present, that the NYC is actually taking a, a key role in actually ensuring that these things are brought forward. I think that we'll be in a better position to assess their needs and assess what they want. And our opening doors for opportunities program while sports is what we use to bring them together, it is what we use to, in order to engage other young persons in, in aspects that won't necessarily be involved in sports, um, but that's what we're going to use to engage them. And we've put in our action plan that there needs to be consultation as well with every single Youth and Sports Council within the first three months of, of the new NYC. And Mr. Rene might say that you've been there for the past two years of the NYC. You haven't done anything. The difference between the last two years and the next two years Mr. Rene is the leadership. Naya Salfred will be president. I, <laughs> All right, we have another question from the floor. Okay. Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, firstly, let me commend the three young men on you know, offering themselves to assume leadership. Uh, I actually have a question for each of the, the candidates. Um, Mr. George, 
uh, your question is, uh, as Shalo uh, mentioned earlier, you are the, the new face on the scene. How do you plan to mitigate against the issue of limited funding to execute NYC events? Um, Robert, your question is, well, we've heard a lot about engagement from all the candidates. Uh, could you elaborate a bit more on your strategy to ensure that the activities of the different communities, youth and sports councils, realize a higher number of participants? Because, you know, sometimes they have very low, low turnout. And Nias, you are the only person here who's going up again, uh, or a member of the current council. What mistakes have you made in your current tenure, and how do you plan to fix them moving forward should you be elected as president? All right. Um, great questions. George, limited funding. How do you plan to tackle that? Um, uh, Nias can answer that afterward, but not, no, not my question, but then what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, the NYC now totally depend on the government funding. Um, as an event planner, um, I believe that the NYC needs to start making their own money through fundraisers, events. You can throw a gala and that raise about 30000 per gala if you do that. Those events can fund the NYC and become an undependable, bec and become to become undependable on the government. So I think that those, that should be done. Renee's strategy for engagement, increasing participation, what are the plans? Um, we, we had that, that, in, that issue in South Castries. Young people were not coming out to our activities. And we realized the reason that they were not coming out, of course, is because there was a disconnect. They, they never used to hear about the South Castries Youth and Sports Council. So even if you, 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 you post and you say, we're having a workshop, why would I come to a workshop you know, planned by individuals who I don't know, not you, right? So what we started to do was we started to, we, we had a flagship program called Know Your Community, KYC, where we brought young people together from the community and we just had a social activity. Um, then the social activity could be a hike. Um, the social activity could be a beach barbecue. The social activity could be a number of things. Um, that way you start to build connections, right? And what used to happen is when we started having all these social activities, Young people used to be like, oh, wow, you know, there is a Youth and Sports Council. Uh, how, can I, how can I volunteer? And so uh, we had a strong PR, uh, PRO as well who was always um, spreading the word on social media. So more people started to, um, to know about our activities. And they started to, be, to, to want to be a part of it, to want to be involved. And so I believe that we can definitely use more social, um, social activities. I also... Um, I also believe that we can, is my, did this is my time up? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, yes, I also believe that we can use the arts to draw um, young people, right? We have a lot of Denry segment talent. We have a lot of, let's, let's use that talent. Let's bring the young people, because they, they like the arts. They like the music. So at, at some point, if we, if we can't get their attention, we, we bring out some, some artists. They love the entertainment. And when the artists are here, when all of them have, have, we have, have, have come, um, to the activity, we let them know that, listen, we, we want to engage you, not just for entertainment, but we want to engage you on a more positive note. Thank so you. Um, Alfred, mistakes, lessons learned? Okay, first of all, I just want to respond quickly to Dwight. <coughs> yes, the NYC receives a subvention from the government, which is very limited, yeah. but through my direct resource mobilization efforts, the NYC has raised over $250,000 to supplement its programming over the past two years. So that's an answer to your question. And that is something that we hope to continue over the course of the next two years. Um, the NYC has understood that you know, there is limited funding. So we have decided that we're going to introduce a social enterprise underneath the National Youth Council to target directly um, that issue and to be able to fund our programs. And of course, we will implement a, an alumni association with all the stalwarts of the NYC to help them bring um, resources together. So you shall would be on the Alumni Association where bring skills and talents together. But as it relates to your question, Yenver, the strength of any good leader is admitting where they fell short and proposing a plan to move it forward. And where I think that we fell short is in terms of our engagement on the ground with youth and, youth and sports councils. It did begin, it did start in the first year. We visited Mabuya, and contrary to popular belief, we did make serious intervention in Chuzel as well. But that is something that I think that we need to take priority on and we need to ensure that on the grassroots level, and our, our action plan speaks to it, direct engagement of the youth and sports councils to ensure that we know what's going on with them. We know the, 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 the problems that, that persist. And that is something on live television, 
that I can assure that every single Youth and Sports Council, we will be engaged by the first three months. If I, if I may, um, I, I, I do not believe, I do not believe, okay, mm -hmm. that one, but one man is responsible for all the issues of the NYC. And this is something that this uh, gentleman's team has continued to purport, that all the issues that the NYC has faced it, it, it is, is, is as a result of the leadership, as he, he said. The truth of the matter is, you, Mr. Alfred and the, the, his entire, and the entire executive of the National Youth Council must take collective responsibility for the issues, for the fact that they did not, you, you rightly said, you raised 200 and something thousand dollars. How did that 200 and something thousand dollars filter down into programs into the communities? All right, we have three Hi. questions from, from Facebook. Um, I'll go through each of them. And one for each of you. Um, Dwight, what will you do with regards to the dilapidated Youth and Sports Council around the island? Um, I think we, we've touched on that, but Dwight has not gotten a chance to weigh in on this like he would like. Um, beyond abortion, we currently have a grave issue among young women with the rate of consumption of morning after pills and how easily accessible it has become. Do any of the candidates have any plans as it relates to sexual and reproductive health for the said demographic? And how would they maximize digital media to raise awareness of this? And the third one, how can the NYC engage youth in the diaspora who are still actively engaged in St. Lucia? The ambassador's program could have been a good approach to engage St. Lucian youth both in and out of the island. So Dwight, Rennie, Alfred, let's go. One of my ambitions is, in fact, the first ambition in my manifesto is to move rural youth forward. And that is to bring forward, bring to light the youth and sports councils that have, that have been unheard of um, and neglected. Um, especially those in the South who tend to be, the participation has been lacked of. Um, and most of our events are centralized so we need to decentralize the activities to gain participation from those youth and sports councils Rene, abortion morning after pills digital media um again i am a firm believer in the arts i will be representing i'm one of the um individuals who's part of a contingent of young people going to represent St. lucia carrie festa um doing a play called a little folk tale i am very much a believer in the arts i believe that we can also use um, drama, um, acting, vines, we can put, um, we can do public service announcements and promulgate it, highlighting these issues. I think it is time for us to use technology to bring these issues to the young people. I believe that's one of the ways we can do that. And again, I do not, I will not infringe on a woman's right to choose whatever she decides to do with her body. That, that is a, a, a decision for a woman to make. Nias, you in the diaspora? Um, permit me 20 seconds just to lean into the previous question. Um, the first vice president candidate on the YTH team has put together a brilliant plan called an I Am Woman campaign that basically seeks to target exactly what you're speaking about, about engaging women who have been disenfranchised, women dealing with issues of abortion, women dealing with issues of depression. And I think that that is something, given the passion that she has, will definitely lead into something that is um, phenomenal for, for, for young women in St. Lucia. And as it relates to engaging youth in the diaspora, we did speak about the Youth Ambassadors Network International, about tapping into the expertise of our young people who are abroad, but are not, they cannot necessarily contribute. And that includes young people who are abroad and they are studying. Young people who um, probably could not find the opportunity here that they need to um, travel overseas to, to contribute. Young people who may not be born here, but they are solution by, by parentage. We realize the importance of every single young person who is in Lucian any what to, um, what to way um, possible, and we need to engage them. So the Youth Ambassadors Network International will speak directly to that, and that is a program that will be also be um, facilitated by our hopefully incoming first vice president, Ms. Edwin. So we'll take two more questions from the floor, and then we'll move in for closing remarks. Gabi Foshi, Sufra Youth and Sports Council. Um, question which is how or what are the plans for the NYC to engage the outer district? So for example, Sufre. Typical example is with the upcoming election, the only team that we saw was Nias and his team. And so we have been fortunate to come here. I have been fortunate to come here to represent the Sufre Youth and Sports Council and to see 
and hear the plans of the other persons. If you are to be elected, Mr. René, how are you able to incorporate not just the councils from the immediate area or from the city, but from the outer districts to ensure firm participation at all the time for the period of the um, the period at which the NYC sits to represent them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. Um, and of course, Sufre is a district that is um, very dear to my heart. Um, I, I recently attended the Caribbean Youth Conference. And when I was, I was engaging with some young people from Sufre, who of course lamented over the fact that Sufre had, ne had been neglected. Um, too often, the National Youth Council has not had programs in these outer districts. Um, our first order of business, as, we, as I rightly told you, is that we will be coming to the Youth and Sports Councils, all of them. We will be helping them ensure that the structure is, is, is um, properly uh, delineated, that they know um, they have proper constitutions, they have a proper executive. And then we are going to continue to engage these youth and sports councils all throughout the year. We are going to help you all put programs in place. We are going to attend your programs. We are going to put workshops in place to train the executives as well because we want to empower the young people from Sufre to, to take on, to take on um, that particular mandate. And so um, I, I understand, like I said, and I appreciate the fact that you brought up Sufre, and we will be coming to Sufre as though with all the other youth and sports councils to ensure that the groundwork in Sufre is done. Mobilize the young people, bring them together, ensure that that voluntarism in Sufre is something that is 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 um voluntary voluntarism in Sufre is something that young people are interested in doing. All right, we'll take our final question. I thought that was a question. I want to respond. Um, Nias wishes to respond so. Okay. Um, Sufra is very dear to Mr. Rennie's heart, yet Sufra has not seen him. Any, anything for a vote, right? Anything for a vote, right? Um, but the NYC in the past has always been, and we cannot run away from it, a Castries Youth Council or North Youth Council, Exhibit A. Most persons have tend to come from the north of the island as it relates to an NYC executive. The YTH team has made it their priority to ensure that every single young person in St. Lucia can hold accountable somebody on the executive. And that is why every single member of the seven member team is from a different district. We need to make sure that we are, hold our NYC executives accountable. And that is what, not something that was, um, that was called for in the, in, in the last two years, but that is something that I will say that the youth of Shoes need to hold me accountable over the uh, next two years. Because we've made it, a I'm speaking Mr. Rennie, mm -hmm. we've made it a priority to ensure that every single young person in St. Lucia, regardless of where you come from, is represented on the National Youth Council. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day it is the St. Lucia National Youth Council. Um, I'm not a politician. Okay? I don't only visit youth and sports councils when, it, when it's the election. Okay? I am not. And so, this, it took this gentleman, listen to me, and listen to me well. It took this gentleman two years, okay, before he showed his face in his own constituency, Shozel. Understand what I'm telling you? And hold on, hold on. Okay, yes, you said you made one effort, but the fact is... Not one effort, Mr. Ray. Listen, you right, and I... Let's avoid the back and forth. You and I both know, Mr. Mr. Alfred, that Shozel... You and I both know that Shozel has been deficient over the last year, and you have done nothing to help revive it. That is a fact, and you admitted that you, you did not do what, what was necessary. I am not a politician. I am not going to come to you only when it's election time. Okay, and the truth is, it took him two years to go down to these outer districts. And guess what happened? In, in two weeks, hear, hear me well, in two weeks, he has found the time to go and visit all the other youth and sports councils. I am not a politician, and I will not, and at the end of the day, I am not going to, to, I am not going to, to pretend as though that now, since I want everybody's votes, we are going to rush and see everybody. The truth is, we would have um, given, a, we, we will have an opportunity as well at the general council so that you can see my entire team and hear some of our plans because at the end of the day we may not have the resources to go all around the island and we are not politicians okay, okay? Nice I, I, I need to respond to that because mr Rene has been very dishonest and very dishonest i'm not a dishonest man i'm yeah. not a dishonest man because the nyc did make efforts to visit communities yes i admit and i've been saying that i accept some of the responsibility right and just at the end there. of the day at the end of the day the nyc did 
make efforts to go into these communities. And it doesn't seem like Mr. Rene did much research on who's going up on his team. Because the current person who's going up for general secretary, I love her, she's my friend, but she's going up as a GS on your team. Yes. So are you, are you removing yourself accountability from yourself and your team? No, Sorry. no, no. All right, no. guys, let's let's. My general secretary me. is the only person in Chozel, the only person, and I must commend her, that has been holding the fort with the Social Youth and Sports Council. And, and I, I would not say the only, but, but at least one of the few young people who have been holding the fort with the Social Youth and Sports Council. And I cannot say the same for you, who had direct responsibility, plus you had the resources being the Vice President of the NYC. All right, guys, we have five minutes, five minutes left. One more question and then closing remarks. Thank In. you, Mr. Shalom. Good evening, everybody. Oh, we have and you know, it's here. Yeah, I'm the next question, and I wanted to just stand up while this whole commotion was going on because for some reason I stand very disappointed. Guys, I'm very excited that you took up this mantle to be the leaders of the next NYC. I'll remove my glasses just to make sure that I emphasize on this point and this question that I will ask. Um, while I was sitting here, I was really supporting each and every one of you because I think it's a, it takes a really brave person to want to lead the next group of leaders. But the question that came, that started to slap me in the face, and it was daunting, is that, you know, people started to refer to YT age and this group and whatever group. How will we work with the other persons if the entire YT age doesn't make it? Or if the entire stage does not make it? Um, and in truth and in fact, I am with the stage team. You guys have seen me. But I have made myself available to be able to work with any team. Now, the fact that Mr. Alfred would have made a comment about the person who sat in the position of public relations a couple of years ago wanting to go up again as the, the, as the, the, the second vice president of the next team. I mean, we did not come here for that. As young people, we came here to hear what's going to happen. And then the next thing is, this really sounded like something by the Castries market. Because we started quarreling behind each other. If both of us. I mean, if we had to see the manifesto, let us see before the, the whole thing started. Let us go through the manifesto. And I'm proud of you that you have a hard copy of the manifesto. And sometimes what politicians do is that they have the hard copy, mm -hmm. but are we going to action that exactly. thing out? They and the next thing is, it was very disappointing to see you all just quarreling behind each other. Now, I'm so upset that I'm very sorry, Mr. Charlotte, that I'm being a bit you know, upset and emotional, but it really touched me because that is the same thing that we don't want young people to see. We don't want young people to see us quarreling behind each other because after the election, we would hope that the three of you would be able to work together so that we could see this movement. We could see young people being the movers and shakers of this nation. So tonight, I just had to stand up and say, will you guys be able to work if YTH or if stage does not make it? Would you be able to work with the other members who have put themselves up to lead the NYC? Right? I would like you to answer this question. Thank I you. Think we, have, we have a good final. We have a good uh, final okay, question. Okay, let me, let, if I may, if I may, if I may, and I, and I thank um, uh, Ms. McPhee for that question. Um, in my capacity as a trustee to the NYC, this gentleman, I had to work closely with him. He was on my committee for the... Um, for a, a, a particular event that I wanted to have called the Big Hit. The first coming, the, out, um, the outgoing treasurer, she's also, um, she was also a member of the, the executive, and I had to work closely with her as well. They can both attest that I, had, I never had any issues working with either of them. Even before the campaign started, I indicated to them, and they self-indicated to me, that if per adventure I lose, that they would want me to work on committees, and I said yes, gladly. I will do so. I have no problems with doing so. But what, what, what I, I don't want us to lose sight of is that th that happened last year. That very situation happened last year where a young man did not, a young man uh, did from another team won a particular post. And, I can, and, I, and, and if you have conversations with individuals close to the situation, they will tell you that this gentleman and All other right, people time is up. made it very difficult for this young man to be on their one, team. One more, one more minute, so each of you have 30 seconds. Dwight? Um, in closing, I would just like to leave a quote from my greatest inspiration, which is, action without vision is passing time. Vision without action is merely daydreaming. But vision with action can change the world. And that is by Nelson Mandela. And my vision with action will change the NYC for good. I thank you.
Um, I like in my closing arguments to respond to Jenna. Um, I do admit that this conversation could have ended a lot better. Mr. Rennie came in and he said, you know, take it easy on me. And then he went into attack mode. But at the end of the day, our job you as young people- You were the one people, saying that I had no solution. As, as young people, you we have one, me. as young people, we have one agenda. And that is to work towards the development of young people. And I have a, rep, I have a, a relationship with most of the members of the opposite team. Josiah can attest to that, Joshua can attest to that. I, I don't know Michael very long, but I have no issues with Michael or with Eugenia. I don't know Melvina very well. But at the end of the day, our, our, our key, um, the, the thing that we need to accomplish is the development of young people. And I think that as youth, we need to be able to work together. And we've put together an action plan that seeks to engage every single young person, regardless of whether or not you stage or why teach. We have one agenda, and that's youth. And we need to stick to that. I, I totally agree with that. 30 seconds running. Right, I totally agree with that. Um, yes, individuals started, started throwing jabs at me and saying, I have no solutions. And I believe that from the beginning when I started speaking, I started telling you all the, all, uh, the solutions that we have, we're going to take them. First of all, we're going to establish the Youth and Sports Council. We said that that would have been our first mandate. That's a solution. Um, we, we, I want to also speak to some of the solutions to tackle things like recidivism. Okay, we, d we indicated that, well, we, we want to establish a program um, whereby all young persons who leave prison enroll in a reintegration and rehabilitation program, and that has to be championed by the NYC. That's a solution. We want to ensure better security measures are in place, even in our schools. It, we, the, we have a proliferation of guns coming out into the streets. We must get to a point where our schools are secure. That's a solution. Whether it be that we implement metal detectors in the schools so that, so that at the end of the day, young persons who are coming into the school does not come to school um, and end up in a war zone. So um, I do believe that I will, will work with any individual who wins. That is a fact. I have proven that I can work with everybody. All right. So I think we've ended on a good note with our candidates pledging to support whichever candidate that wins and we hope that you guys don't disappear after the elections when you get defeated there are lots of committees that we need to work on um so we've come to the end of the show um it's been fiery it's been exciting um you've had candidates challenging each other um i hope we can continue to do this i don't know if ntn would be willing to continue this um national dialogues but i think it's a wonderful platform to get out youth issues to explore them and to really delve in a little deeper into the issues that affect you. I want to wish you guys all the best in the upcoming election. I think um, NYC will do well with any of you guys at the helm. So thank you and good night. Uh,